With a wave of Isis's hand, the next thing they knew, they found themselves back in their uncle's mansion again. Suddenly, they wildly guessed what Horus and Isis's gift was just from looking around. The mansion was completely repaired, as if it had never been destroyed. Outside, Amos was having tea, and he looked better than he had in days. They also noticed that Philip the Crocodile was back in his pool, safe and sound. Sadie ran over and hugged her uncle. Then, Amos announced that he decided to go away for a while to the first gnome. He explained that he wasn't quite at his full strength yet, and they had the best healers there. I may be gone for a while, but can I trust you two to look after the place? Promise me you'll treat it like your home, won't you? Because after all, it is your home now. We promise, Uncle. You can count on me, Sadie said. Yeah, said Carter. Wait, what? Also, Amos said, I think you should start recruiting soon. There are plenty of blood of the pharaohs out there in the world. Most of them don't even know who they are. You two may be their only hope. He hugged Carter and Sadie goodbye. Then he picked up a suitcase, stepped up on the edge of the building, and said, And don't worry, I won't leave you two alone without a chaperone. He jumped off the edge of the building and disappeared out of thin air before they could ask questions. Was that my suitcase that he took? Carter asked. Eh, uh, whatever. Anyway, who do you suppose he meant by a chaperone? He asked Sadie. I don't know, but I doubt he meant Khufu, Sadie said. Well, sounds like there's a job opening here, a voice said behind them. They turned around to see and smile at the sight of an old friend. Sadie ran happily into the arms of Bost. And they say cats don't really have nine lives, she humored. What happened next? Well, the next couple of days were kind of quiet, thankfully, as they tried to figure out where they should start looking for recruits. Then one night, Sadie had a dream vision that gave her an idea of where to look. After telling Carter and Bost about it, they packed up the spine of Osiris, rented a car, and drove off. Along the way, Carter and Sadie decided to record their adventure with a rather old tape recorder Sadie got in the mail a couple of days ago as a gift from her grandparents. Where exactly they had to go and who they would leave the gift for still remains a secret. Soon enough, they stopped by a school, snuck the gift into a locker, and magically sealed it in with Carter's combination, 13-32-33. They weren't worried at all, because they knew the right people would come across it. So now, all they could do was wait until recruits responded, and hopefully, they would know to pass the gift on. Carter and Sadie had to trust that the gods would guide the blood of the pharaohs to Brooklyn House. They also had to prepare for whenever Set returned. Also, Carter had to find the real Zia, wherever she may be. Most of all, chaos was slowly rising. Apophis was out there, which meant the gods and humans had to reunite. It was the only way they could save the world. And so, the Kane family was left with a lot of work to do. Mr. Bruner. That is your name, isn't it? Or do you go by another one these days? Oh no, Amos, there's no need for that now these days. I've been all too busy lately. Knowing you, I'm sure you have. As have I, more recently. You know you're taking quite a risk just coming here, Kyron. Even just passing the bridge. Yes, 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 I know, I know. It's just, I've been running out of places to search. A lot's been happening more recently since the last big battle. I've lost all contact with my superior, so I'm running out of people to ask for help. Because what's more, I spent days searching for something precious. One of my best students is currently missing. Hi.
啊